Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure for me to open this uh, special EPS session here on the occasion of uh, the birthday of Maxi and Ifisk. And let me first uh, present official greetings from EPS and congratulations to this great event. And I just want to talk one minute about the fact why this is a special EPS session. You know, EPS is a kind of roof organization of more than 44 national societies and about 130,000 physicists in all these societies. And uh, there's uh, one uh, division out of the 11, which is the statistical and nonlinear physics division, and we got a new board uh, since last year, and uh, so many people are represented here. For example, for Spain, it's uh, Raul Toral over there. And uh, one of the things we do is we sponsor workshops. So if you have a good idea of a special session of, or of a workshop, then there's the possibility to get funding from EPS. And the simplest thing is simply uh, drop me an email and explain what type of workshop you want to do. And then we can dis discuss about it. Uh, so uh, here, this is an example of a special uh, sponsored EPS session. But other things can be done, in particular in the area of complex systems, uh, which uh, we do. The other thing that I want to mention is that uh, we got a new prize in our division, the Statistical and Nonlinear Physics Prize. And there's a call for nomination. And if you have a good idea of somebody in complex systems or, uh, or statistical physics, a uh, uh, person who you want to nominate, then please do that. Uh, it's very simple. Just send me an email with your suggestion, one page with uh, six uh, key publications, and then we'll discuss that. There's also a junior uh, uh, version of that prize for a person who is uh, uh, less than six years away from his or her PhD. So, send suggestions. We really want to represent the opinion of all the physicists and scientists in the field. Okay, it's now a great pleasure for me to open this session, and the first speaker is Angelo Volpiano, who will talk about levels of reality in weather forecasting. Okay, good morning. Uh, it's nice to be here for the Maxi uh, birthday. And uh, so uh, thanks for the invitation. It's nice to be again here in, in Palma. And uh, the, the, I, I am not an expert in uh, weather forecasting. I have to, I am, my field is uh, statistical mechanics and chaos. And uh, uh, the important word is not weather forecasting, but lesson. OK? And uh, so, and so apparently, OK, a birthday to Maxi for his uh, first 65 years. And uh, so uh, uh, apparently, the weather forecasting is a very practical uh, uh, topic, important, of course. But uh, uh, my interest uh, is uh, for the conceptual uh, aspect. In particular, so since this is a, a special event, I decide not to uh, give a talk about my last work, which is not uh, relevant for nothing, but so just some uh, general discussion about the prediction. Uh, unfort no, unfort fortunately, already the first talk by uh, Alessandro Vespignani, he already present almost my argument, but so I just uh, repeat and expand uh, something. And uh, uh, so uh, the, my discussion will be about the prediction problem, which uh, 
related to some uh, general aspect of science, like the extreme reductionism and extreme uh, inductionism, in, in, in inductive uh, aspect. And so, and since I am an old professor, almost old as Maxi, but not very far, and uh, I should stress the relevance of some old fact that sometimes the young people don't know, and uh, for, the, for the building of, uh, uh, of a model. Okay, so the, the, two, the two opposite point of view, uh, not only in prediction, prevision, but also in, in science, so there's the extreme reductionism, so one of the champions of extreme reductionism, uh, Steve Weinberg, Nobel Prize for Physics, and uh, some play, in some place he wrote that, uh, so we don't know the final law of nature, but we know that they are not expressed in terms of cold front and thunderstorm. So in the sense that the, the true, uh, the, the, the true uh, uh, aspect, the true relevant aspect of the world is uh, atoms and then quark and then strings and so on. And the, the, the important work of a physicist is to understand the deepest structure. Okay, this is the point of view of uh, uh, people working in high energy physics. I, I suspect that nobody in this audience has shared this, uh, uh, this opinion. But so, uh, uh, in, 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 in many departments of physics, uh, this is the majority. Okay, the, the, the opposite point of view uh, is naive uh, inductive approach, uh, which now has been uh, so reconsidered with, uh, with uh, the, the fashion of uh, big data. No? Maybe you know this, uh, this famous or infamous, I don't know, paper of uh, Chris Anderson. And this, is the this was the title. The title is very uh, clear, is the idea that uh, data delug made the scientist ob method obsolete. So who care of theory? We have uh, data. Uh, from data, we can uh, do everything. So correlation is enough, is the, the, uh, the slogan. Uh, so uh, now, uh, what is the, 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 the idea of, uh, of uh, inductive approach? It's a very old tradition, starting oh, everything starts from Bible. Okay. And uh, so in the book, the book, uh, book of uh, Coelet, the, Everybody knows nothing new under the sun, but uh, what is important for us is the, the, the sentence before. What has been will be again, and what has been done will do again. Okay, and this is the, this in some sense is the essence of the, uh, of science in some sense. It's correct, it's true. Huh? And, uh, and so and now this, this, uh, this um, point, point of view has been reinforced recently by the, so let me go, big data philosophy, so like, naïf, not, but some people really believe in this, that, so forget the theory, now we have enough data and the data is enough to, to, uh, to understand. Okay, so um, if you try to formalize this idea, the idea that from some antecedent follow the same consequence, like not, nothing new under the sun, uh, this has been formalized, uh, I don't know when, but so, uh, in the recent time, the idea is, is the following. Okay, imagine, let, let us start with uh, uh, a, a relatively simple uh, situation where there is a certain phenomenon, and uh, we know that uh, this phenomenon is described by a certain vector. Usually this is not true, but let me assume this. So this is a very lucky situation. I, I know that the, the, the system is described by a certain vector, and I know the, the past of the, of the system. I have a time series of the past, maybe long enough, and uh, M means today, and I want to predict the situation tomorrow. Okay? Uh, how, how I can do? Uh, so, let, let me assume that the system is deterministic. It's not obvious, but let me assume the system is deterministic. And uh, I look in the past, looking if there exists a situation close to the situation of today. So, I look in the past if there exists a state K, SK, close enough to the present state. If I found this, I can say that the situation tomorrow will be very close to the situation at today K plus one. This is okay. This sounds uh, reasonable. No, sound, 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 sound correct. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, I have... Uh, I, Today I am, uh, I am here, I look uh, in, in the past, I found uh, this, uh, this situation, and tomorrow I'll be here, and then so on. Of course, after 
someday the difference will, uh, will be very large because there is chaos and so on. Well, in in this, my talk, I don't touch the problem of chaos. The chaos is present, but it's not the, the biggest important trouble for prediction. Okay, this is the, the method. And uh, so apparently, apparently it uh, sounds uh, okay. But uh, so uh, already in the past, uh, certain important gentlemen like uh, Maxwell uh, reflect that maybe this is not so obvious because it's not so obvious that you can find twice the same things. So he wrote this in, uh, in some, some uh, uh, popular uh, lecture. And the same has been done by, by Richard. So he said that, OK, in principle, you can have this. But when you try to do, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not so obvious. OK, now, let, now, of course, the people uh, try to use this idea. So let me discuss two examples, one uh, positive uh, success and uh, a, a failure. Oh, it's a success due to the tidal prediction. So the tidal prediction, of course, is important for many, for many reasons. And uh, is a fact that uh, the people also, in the, also two centuries ago uh, were able to predict tidal with some empirical method. And this is formalized by Lord Kelvin and George Darwin, who was the son of uh, the famous uh, biologists. And they was able to prove uh, that uh, it's possible to predict the level of uh, water in the harbor. Uh, just using a uh, relatively simple uh, Fourier transform. And they, so they had the company. They had the company. They get a lot of money for this. So you had to pay for this. And uh, they invent, uh, they invent uh, the first, probably the first analog computer. This, this guy, this stuff. This is enormous stuff. This is something like uh, one or 2,000 kilo, kilos. Uh, so th th this kind of thing has been used by the Navy uh, by the Navy or US up, uh, up to half a century ago. Uh, this more efficient, this stuff that used the uh, model computer in try to integrate the, the, the partial differential equation. So in this case, this, this is an example of success. So you start from uh, practically from observation, you build up a, a model just on the empirical level, and uh, you are able to, to do the prediction. OK. Then uh, there is another example, the weather forecasting. Lawrence, the famous uh, Edward Lawrence, tried to repeat the, the game. He start uh, looking at the last, uh, I don't know, 50 years, the meteorological chart in North uh, America. And he was looking for uh, an analog. And he was not able to find an analog. So you look at the situation today, just look at the last uh, 50 years, day by day, looking if there exists a situation close to the situa to actual situation. And he realized that uh, there is... Uh, there is no, he was not able to find nothing. OK, so but you can say, but now we are in the data the Luke age. Maybe now we have a lot of data, and maybe it's possible to, uh, to do this, uh, this kind of approach. Uh, so the problem is that there is a serious limitation. The serious limitation is due to this gentleman, Henri Poincaré. Uh, so I forget the accent. And uh, so this, this famous. Uh, uh, famous sentence by uh, Poincaré, who was a theoretician, so, and, uh, so he, he stressed the relevance of theory and not uh, only of, of data. Data are important, but uh, only the data is not, are, not, uh, are not enough. And uh, what is the, 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 uh, the reason of the failure of the um, Lawrence uh, attempt? is related to the Poincaré recurrence theorem. So everybody knows the recurrent, the Poincaré recurrence theorem. So if you have a, dynamic, a dynamical system in a bounded uh, domain, uh, after a certain time, the system will be back close to the initial condition. Less uh, known is the problem, how long I have to wait? OK, so this problem has been treated the first time by Boltzmann. In the, in the problem of, uh, of, uh, of irreversibility. And Boltzmann, with some uh, uh, heuristic argument, arrived to the conclusion that if you have a system with uh, n particles, where n is very large, the recurrence time is exponentially larger 
in n. And so if you put here some number, you obtain that this recurrence time much larger than the age of the universe and blah, blah, blah. So, okay. And so this was enough to say that the uh, recurrence uh, problem is not so relevant for the, uh, for the, <coughs> for the reversibility. Okay, now, what is the relation of this result uh, for... So, and now, this is what uh, result due to Boltzmann, and this has been generalized by Mark Katz. Uh, Mark Katz formalized the idea of Boltzmann, and if you wonder the following problem. So, you, you have a certain region, you start from uh, your initial condition in this certain region, and you wonder how long you have to wait in order to come back uh, in the same region. Uh, and... Um, Katz was able to prove the following result. That which is not so astonishing, so it's, it's rather intuitive. So if you consider a stochastic process, this is you can do in two lines. Uh, so the, the, the result is the following, that the uh, mean average return time is, uh, apart uh, time here, is inversion, is uh, one over the probability to stay in, the, in this region. So, Imagine that the region has a certain size epsilon, and the uh, typical size of the system is L. So the probability is epsilon over L to D, where D is the dimension of the system. Uh, if the system is uh, dissipative, this is a di fractal dimension, or Grassberger Procaccia dimension, or some dimension, so it's not, it's not very important, the difference. Okay, it's, it's a number, okay? And so uh, now what is the consequence of this? Uh, of this? Oh, but this is exactly what, uh, what, what uh, uh, Boltzmann obtained. Eh? And what is the... Uh, also for, for the irreversibility, this result is very, is very positive because you had that the, the recurrence time is enormous, and so who cares, okay? But now you wonder about the impact of this result for the recasting. For recasting. The recurrence time and the time to go back in the past to find an analogo is exactly the same. You just reverse the time. So this means that uh, you have to go far in the past of the time, which is the order of magnitude of the record time. So you need that. The, the, depend of the dimension, depend of your precision, depend of your precision, how, how precise you want the analog, and the, but overall depend by the, the dimension. So you see, you realize that if the the dimension is large, well, large means not uh, the Avogadro number, but six or seven, and if you accept a tolerance of 5%, uh, this number is here enormous, okay? So you see that, uh, the, the, ju just to show you the, the idea, this. Lawrence, who was a genius, just to show in a pedagogical way the, the stuff, uh, introduced this very simple mode. This is a cartoon of the um, Navier-Stokes equation in the sense that you have the same nonlinearity in a Fourier space, but so. And uh, so it's an it's a, it's a, it's a oversimplified model of uh, uh, climate. But however, it, it's, it's nice. So, and then here is now a simulation just to show the stuff. Uh, plot, look, look, you, you produce some data from the model. And then you look uh, uh, how far uh, you look at, at uh, as function of the size of the time series, the, the most precise uh, analog you find. So you see that uh, the, the result depends on the dimension. These are two different situations. So in the situation with the blue circle, this one, the dimension is uh, 3, 3.1. So you see that it's relatively easy to find an analog. With, uh, uh, with uh, so, uh, 10,000, uh, uh, the size of 10,000, you have a precision of uh, almost uh, 0. Uh, 0.1%, but uh, just uh, with a dimension of 6, uh, in order to have a precision of uh, 1%, you need an enormous amount uh, of data. And this uh, dimension is just 6, it's not 20, like 6. Okay, this is the, the, the situation. And uh, so, the, the, uh, well, uh, so now you, uh, we can uh, re reconsider the, 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 the problem before. Why Kelvin and uh, Darwin well, very smart, of course, but also very lucky, because in their case, the dimension is 3, 3.5, 4, or something. so it's not a serious problem. On the contrary, Lawrence, in the case of the problem considered by Lawrence, the dimension is uh, some thousand, so there is no chance. There is no chance even with eight, so you can imagine. This is the, this is the, the, the reason of the, 
the truth. The, the reason of the difference. Okay, who is this guy? Uh, Lewis Fry Richardson. So he was a genius. So, uh, for example, so usually the people believe that the fractal has been introduced by Mandelbrot. Wrong. This is the guy who introduced the fractal. Okay, among many other things. And uh, but overall, uh, for our purpose, is the father of the weather prediction. Before him, the weather prediction was done with some very empirical method, just looking at the chart, uh, chart, looking where is the front, and then say, okay, if the front is here, tomorrow will be there. So this kind of, of thing. And he has uh, an idea, which is actually the, the method uh, proposed uh, used today. He said, okay, but atmosphere is a physical system. We know the equation of hydrodynamics. So we have uh, three, three equations for the velocity, one equation for the density, one equation for the pressure, one equation for the water percentage, one equation for the temperature. We have seven partial differential equations, couple, and in addition we have uh, some thermodynamic relation, the equation states. Uh, putting all together, I know the situation today, I will do the situation tomorrow. I just to integrate numerically, okay? And uh, this is this, that what... Uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, Richardson tried to do during the war. During the war, he was on the French front driving ambulance because he was a pacifist, but uh, he was driving uh, ambulance in the uh, French front. And um, so this was really an heroic attempt. Uh, he worked for at least 1,000 hours by hand, so pen and pencil. And uh, after uh, 1,000 hour, uh, 1, hours of computation, he was able to predict uh, a forecast of six hours. Okay, and the result was completely wrong. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, okay, uh, it's wrong, it's wrong because the problem is tough uh, and the problem is complicated, but uh, I am, he said that I am pretty sure that in the future somebody will, able, will, will be able to solve the, the problem. Oh, the problem, uh, so, in fact, he used the word dream. Huh? Um, the problem is, is, very, is, very, is very complicated because uh, uh, although uh, he was a genius, he did realize a very important aspect. And uh, the aspect, uh, and the, the dream of, the, of uh, Richardson uh, has been realized uh, something like uh, many decades, uh, some decades uh, after his first attempt. And in order to, 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 to do the... To do the, 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 the the dream of, of the wish of Richard, so it's necessary some non-trivial aspect, okay? And uh, uh, the guy who was able to do this was von Neumann, okay, a great mathematician, so everybody knows von Neumann. And uh, uh, so here, this is the conference of complex system, multi -pro probably, as far as I know, this is the first real attempt to complex problem. Putting together, so in the, after the war, there was the meteorological project, in Princeton, where, where um, um, von Neumann put in together people working in, mathem in mathematics, in meteorology, engineering, computer science, and so on. And uh, uh, with this, uh, the, the, two important, the two most important persons on this project was von Neumann and Czerny. Uh, Czerny was a very important meteorologist. And uh, uh, they, they realize, they realize, okay they realize that the, the uh, oh, I'm sorry, where is the problem? Oh. No, sorry. Uh, they realize that the, 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 um, the, reason, the, reason, uh, the reason of the, of the attempt to the, um, okay, I forget the where is the, the reason of the attempt, the reason of the failure of the attempt of Richardson was that Richardson was too precise. That sounds a bit uh, strange. Uh, too precise means that he used uh, the, uh, the, the first principle equation. And the first principle equation are involved the very fast, uh, fast variable, the, the wave. So uh, if you are a meteorologist, you care of the wave. And so, but the problem is if you include the wave, then you are forced to use a very small uh, integration step. And this is the trouble, this is the trouble. So technically it's the numerical instability. So in order to, to use the equation, it is necessary to avoid to use the precise equation. You have to introduce an effective equation. And this is the contribution 
This is the contribution of, of, of Czarny and, uh, and von Neumann. So they was able to remove, uh, to remove the, 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 fast, uh, the fast variable and use effective equations, what's called geo, geo, quasi geostrophic equation, and using this, in, in addition to the computer and, and, and so on, they was able to, to, to produce, uh, to produce uh, uh, acceptable uh, weather forecasting. So this problem of the effective equation is, uh, is, is, not, is not a peculiar situation of weather. So you can have uh, everywhere. No? So for example, in protein folding, in protein folding you have that uh, are involved uh, uh, phenomena at very different scale from the, the vibration of the covalent bond, the typical time is 10 to minus 5 seconds, up to the folding time, which is the order of one second. So this is enormous. This is enormous. So in climate, why the climate is very difficult to study? Because in climate, they are involved a process from uh, one day, even, even few seconds, three-dimensional, turbulent, up to uh, 1,000, even 10,000 years, the deep uh, ocean, uh, deep ocean, uh, deep ocean current. So uh, of course, it's necessary to to avoid this, uh, to avoid this fast. Uh, uh, dynamics, like this, uh, Maxi gave important contribution. This is, is necessary to build up a, a model for slow dynamics. No? Uh, so, okay, this is the, the simplest case is we t when we have just two, two classes of variables, fast and slow. In, in, in more realistic situations, it's not so, so simple. And the, the arche uh, archetype uh, uh, example is the Langevin, of course, we have. Uh, where the, the attempt is to produce the, 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 uh, the goal is to produce an effective equation only for the for the for the slow for the slow variable. So now that's just to give you an idea of the difficulty of the weather forecasting. So uh, the uh, the through dynamics. So this is the summary of the different kind of effective equation used according to the scale at which you are looking at. Okay? So, uh, uh, poor Richardson used uh, this one, direct numerical simulation. And, but the direct numerical simulation is okay at the, at the scale of uh, one kilometer. Why? He tried to use uh, this approach, this method, here. Uh, of course, he has some trouble. <laughs> And this is the, the reason. Uh, so you, it's, possible, it's necessary to use another effective uh, uh, equation. This is the, the problem. Okay. So um, uh, the, the, the reason of the effective equation, uh, so there are many, many reasons. So one is but obvious uh, that uh, it's is, is necessary to use uh, a relatively large uh, integration step and a relatively large uh, uh, grid, uh, grid space. But uh, uh, apart from this, uh, apart this what, what, what is important, uh, with the effective equation, you are able to catch the, the, the some deep behavior of the, of the, uh, of the system, with otherwise are hidden by this, uh, this enormous uh, uh, amount of information of the, of the full uh, description. And it was it's interesting the fact that uh, Usually, when you derive an effective equation, the effective equation is not just uh, a mere approximation of the uh, original one. There is something new, no? some, some emergence. Of it. Okay, this is just. Uh, we wrote a book let, uh, about this stuff, but so. And uh, so, the, 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 um, uh, so, what is important is the fact of the level of reality. No? This is very well known, for example, just to example, in, in statistical mechanics. No? The people in the audience knew, knew very well this. So, Imagine that you consider a dynamical problem, non-equilibrium than statistical mechanics. So you start from the microscopic level, you have a UV equation, which is the fundamental level, and then we are, you are in the so-called gamma space in enormous uh, number of dimensions. Then uh, you can introduce uh, already at the microscopic level a move space description with only one body particle, one body description, Boltzmann equation, and then you can arrive at the mesoscopic level you have some Fokker Planck, and then you have macroscopic level, the hydrodynamic equation, and, and so on. So in climate, you have the same kind of problem. You can start from molecular level. The unique one is accepted by people like Weinberg. But this, of course, is too detailed. Then you can use uh, fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics is the idea of Richardson, but it's still uh, too detailed. Then you have to use uh, quasi-geostrophic equation, but 
at long time, these are not enough. So you have to use effective equation to a large time and so on. So the, the true difficulty of the climate is the building of effective equation. And the, the, tra the difficulty is that uh, the situation is not like this. It's not like this with two scales. There are many scales, from one second to 10,000 years. This is the, the, the difficulty. OK. OK, so now come back to the, to the problem of uh, of a model from data. So, uh, imagine that you have, a, so in, in, in the, the case I discussed before, more or less we know the equation, and we are starting from this equation, if there is some very clever people, these clever people can uh, invent uh, the, a, a, an accurate effective equation. Then you can wonder, what happens if I don't know, if I don't know the starting point. I have no, nothing similar to the Newton or Schrodinger equation. So, and I have some data, some very complicated uh, system, and I have some data, and I have uh, a, lot of, a lot of data, and, uh, and imagine that I know, I know that the system is described by a certain vector. Actually, this is not true, but this is the most, uh, uh, the simplest case. Then, uh, okay, then if the method of analog work, I can try to build up a model. Yeah, with some fitting and so on. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, in, for this idea, uh, this gentleman, Florence Stackens, in the happy 80, yes, and uh, produced a very important contribution, which is called the phase space reconstruction. And uh, his contribution is the following. Imagine that uh, we have uh, a... <laughs> This is a theorem, so there is some precise assumption. Imagine that uh, there is a, a system which I know that the system is deterministic. And I know that the system uh, lives in a finite, uh, uh, finite dimension space. And, uh, but I don't know, that, I don't know the, the, the vector which describes the states. I have, uh, I have the possibility only to measure certain variable, u. And uh, from this variable, it's possible to reconstruct the proper, the, the, from this variable u. It's possible to reconstruct the proper variable describing the state of the system. This is what is called phase space reconstruction in dynamical system. The answer is yes. It's not trivial. It's a, it's a, it's a very important uh, theorem. And uh, it's possible. There is a method. There is a protocol. which is the embedding uh, method. But, uh, so apparently, apparently, uh, apparently with this method, you, you, can, uh, you can use the method to build up the model from data, okay? But uh, then, uh, okay, this is a theorem. A theorem means that the, for a mathematician, M is large enough. But for us, it means large enough. What means large enough? Then you can wonder what means large enough. And if you try to understand what means large enough, you are back to the problem of Katz theorem, Katz lemma. So, means that uh, the method practically cannot work if the dimension is large enough, where well, large enough means five or six. So I remember that uh, I am not so young, that, that in, the, in the happy 80, so there was a big enthusiasm for this method. There appear a lot of completely wrong paper, where the people pretend to resolve so the climate problem, or, or publish on nature, of course, on PRL, and so on. I avoid the name, but so. Uh, there are a lot, a lot of completely wrong paper. Uh, following uh, this, uh, the enthusiasm of the, 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 the theorem, of course, was completely correct. But uh, the use of the theorem was a big, uh, big not, not, not very, not very, uh, not very, but they are correct. So, uh, w what is the problem of the, of the, uh, in the building of the model? So, one can, naively, one can try, okay, there is a theorem, I try to follow the theorem, and I build the, uh, I build the, the, uh, the effect, the model, uh, according to the, uh, Tuckens theorem. Uh, the problem is that uh, the, the method work just uh, if the dimension is small. Uh, okay, apart that uh, if the system is stochastic, the method uh, has some difficulty, but forget this. Uh, then uh, the problem is that uh, we don't know the proper variable. We don't know the proper variable, and the fact that we don't know the proper variable is not a minor point. Is, uh, this is, has been stressed uh, in, uh, by important people. For example, in the famous paper of Sacker Macbeth, of the Path Integral Stochastic Process, paper of 1952 or 1, I don't remember. So, in, uh, in uh, somewhere, they wrote uh, this sentence, which 
in my opinion, is very deep. How do you know you have uh, taken enough variable for it to be Markovian? No, some, uh, uh, was some, some, some talk where well, uh, was discussed about the fact that uh, if you have a Markovian system, then you project that it's not Markovian. Okay, this is well known. So, and so the fact that uh, you, to be Markovian, you have to use the proper, the proper variable. Otherwise, not Markovian. Okay, this, from a mathematical point of view, this is trivial. But uh, so if, if, you, if you want to build up a model, this is important to, uh, to understand which kind of model you have to use. So in, in, the, in the very nice book uh, uh, on statistical mechanics of Schengen Ma, he wrote, uh, he wrote something similar. The hidden warrior thermodynamic is uh, we don't know how many co coordinate of forces are necessary to completely specify in equilibrium states. So this is very important. So uh, the problem now, people working in non-equilibrium non -equilibrium, uh, statistical mechanics, in particular a small system of stochastic thermodynamics, has to face this kind of problem. So you can invent a Langevin equation, of course, you can do uh, mathematical work, but then if you want to have a, a, a touch with physics, it must be clear uh, what is the important variable. This is a, 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 a really a, 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 serious, a serious trouble. Okay, well, I guess it's time to uh, conclude that the, okay, the, the idea to avoid a theory and the use only data is uh, too naive. And the, the real reason is the Katz lemma. And the Katz lemma was already understood by, by Boltzmann. So the, the, the big data really are not so big. Because you say, big data is the beta age 10 to 15. 10 to 15 is nothing. 10 to 15 is enough for dimension 6 or 7. Okay? So apparently the data are many, but not so many. Okay? And uh, the, uh, the attempt to, build, uh, uh, to do a prediction avoiding model is, is hopeless. The unique, the unique possibility is to build up uh, the effective equation. Maybe data can suggest some effective equation, but you cannot do it in an automatic way. So there is this important result due to, 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 to um, tokens, but uh, uh, this is important just because you are sure that uh, uh, in principle you can do, but uh, there is no uh, mechanical protocol to build up the model. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks for your... Now, this is uh, this is great, and we uh, you know we discuss that. Uh, I, uh, can you comment on something? Because you talk always about deterministic. Uh, yeah. uh, many people would argue, well, but this is not true. We are going, uh, you know, many of those systems are stochastic. So, do you see more problem, less problem? And the other thing is that most of the people that do modeling uh, through time series and, and large uh, uh, data sets, they actually use statistical inference more than the exact reconstruction of the phase space. So in a sense, it's an analog uh, uh, approach, but in, in a probability space. And so they could say, well, probably you can, if you have enough signal, you, you sample enough, and then you have a probability yeah. information. Yeah. So how you, can you comment on that? No, okay. The, the, for the problem of the prediction, the fact that you use the deterministic or stochastic problem is not a big difference. The big difference is that you suggest that uh, if you uh, are able to produce a certain cost graining, so you decide that, uh, <coughs> so you do a classification. The classification means that you divide your phase space in some class and this produces a, 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 <coughs> a cost graining. With the cost grain, you can avoid this kind of problem because with the cost grain, practically you have a reduction of the dimension. The problem is not obvious that the cost grain is being done in a proper way. So, it, yeah, this is the, 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 the my opinion. Uh, the, there is some chance. The chance to use the model uh, to build up model from data. If you are, if you have some idea how to build up a cost graining, there is some chance because in this case you reduce you reduce the dimension. This is the problem. But this is a tough tough point as stressed by Unsager and Mao. Any further questions? Oh, that seems to be... Okay, so that's...